Hi everyone, this is Neha here. Welcome back to my channel. So recently somebody commented on one of my shots on my channel that you are talking about retinoids but you are literally using retinol. What they meant was that I was talking about a prescription level ingredient while I'm showing and using a milder form. Implying that retinol and retinoids are two completely different things. And at that point I realized this is a very common confusion. Not just among viewers but even among big creators. A lot of people think retinoids only refer to prescription level level stronger retinoid treatments like tazarotene or even adapalene. But here is the truth, retinoid is actually an umbrella term. Under that umbrella you have retinol, retinal, tretinoin, tazarotene, adapalene. All of these are different types of retinoids. They all are retinoids. They all belong to vitamin A family. And how they differ is based on how many steps they need to convert into retinoic acid, which is the active form that our skin actually uses. And that conversion process, the number of steps, actually determines how strong or how irritating that particular ingredient can be. So today in this video, I'm going to tell you very clearly based on scientific studies and data, so you know exactly what you're using and why. And this comes not just from research but my own experience of using retinoids for over four years now and testing different formulations for my sensitive acne prone oily skin so if you have ever been confused about retinol retinal retinoid this video will finally make it crystal clear so before we get into each of these ingredients let's understand why each one of them is so powerful retinoids in all their forms are derivatives of vitamin a which help treat fine lines and wrinkles rough skin texture acne marks and uneven skin tone pigmentation and and melasma. They're also one of the most researched ingredient for anti-aging and skin renewal. Now depending on your skin type and how tolerant your skin is, you can start with milder over-the-counter forms or move towards stronger prescription based ones. Now let's begin with retinol. Now I have been personally using retinol for over four years and I would say it's gentle but not harmless. It's two steps away from retinoic acid which is the form that our skin uses which means that it has to first convert into retinal and then into retinoic acid before your skin can use it. Because of this it's less irritating compared to stronger forms but that doesn't mean it won't irritate your skin at all. As noted in dermatological studies summarized by Medical News Today and PubMed, retinol requires multiple conversion steps in the skin to become retinoic acid, the active form that drives cell turnover. Tretinoin skips this process entirely, which explains its higher potency. From my own experience, even certain retinol formulations have caused mild redness and irritation when I first started. That's why you see these days many brands formulate retinol with Soothing ingredients like ceramides, peptides, bakuchiol or plant-derived retinoid alternatives to reduce irritation. And these hybrid formulations are designed to reduce the irritation that you experience on your skin while still giving you the same benefits. If you're new to retinoids, retinol is usually the best place to start. Even though it's a gentler form, it's a still a retinoid. So start slow, maybe twice a week and always follow with a good moisturizer. There is also even a milder plant-derived alternative that offers similar results without the irritation as I said earlier. And you will often hear names like Bakuchiol, Bioretinol, Phytoretinol. These are generally considered safe during pregnancy or breastfeeding, but it's always best to check with your doctor first. If you want a full guide on how to start retinol, I have made a video previously which details entire process how to use it, when to introduce it. It's linked up in the cards and also in the description. Now let's move on to retinal with an A, which is only one step away from retinoic acid. This means it converts faster into retinoic acid in your skin and can give you faster, quicker results, but can also be more irritating. I recently introduced retinal into my own routine through two products, one combined with Bakuchiol and the other, the Cellimax Retinal Shot, which even at 0.1% is extremely potent. And trust me, this formula is no joke. It can cause a stinging or irritation even if you are used to retinol from before. So from my own experience and what the studies say, I wouldn't recommend starting your retinoid journey with a retinal formulation. Let your skin first get used to retinol for a few months, then step up to retinal. Especially when you're doing all of this by yourself at your home and not doing it under an expert's guidance. Remember, the fewer conversion steps to retinoic acid, the stronger and potentially more irritating the ingredient becomes. Even skincare formulator and scientist like Dr. Leah Ramachandra, who I've recently spoken to about this particular formulation, agrees that retinol, especially in potent formulations like this one, is for experienced users who already have a well-established skincare routine. Retinol is stronger than retinol and 0.1% is also quite high concentration. So if you've never used retinol, you may see some irritation, right? Some redness, irritation, especially if you use it every day. So I think for people who have allergy sensitive skin, you have to be careful and they may see 
not great results only because they've never used retinol, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's retinol goes to retinol and then goes to retinoic acid. So you have to be quite experienced with retinol to be able to use it safely and see the results. Now let's talk about the prescription side of these ingredients, retinoids, the ones that are often misunderstood. These are tretinoin, tazarotene, and adapalene. And they are the strongest forms because they are already in the retinoic acid form that your skin can use directly no conversion needed that's why they work very fast and also why they can be more irritating than the other forms and that is also why they are only available as prescription only these are literally medicines you know clinically tested and supported by decades of research tested for both efficacy and side effects that's why they are prescribed for conditions like acne hyperpigmentation or photo aging not as general anti-aging creams now in some countries like us adapalene is available over the counter but if you see in countries like canada and india it's a still prescription only so if you are at all thinking a step up to these you should consult your dermatologist i also made a separate video where i talked about tretinoin versus retinol which is linked up here in the cards and also in the description it has all the details on how how they are different which can be used or which should be used ideally when so in case you want more information you can check that video out after watching this one also when i spoke to dr matthew arfa a double board certified dermatologist he explained really well how these prescription and non-prescription based retinoids work and how it should be used responsibly that video is also linked up here in the cards and also in the description if you would like to explore more so let's make this simple retinoid is the umbrella term it's the family of all these vitamin a derivatives retinol and retinal are non-prescription forms. They're mostly available over the counter. However, tretinoin, tazarotene, and adapalene, they are prescription based. If you're a beginner, you need to start slow. You can go for retinol, but still you need to be careful. If you've built tolerance, you can step up to retinol. And if you need targeted results or you're dealing with severe acne, hyperpigmentation, melasma, prescription retinoids under dermatological guidance can be your next step. So I hope this clears the biggest misconception about retinoids for once and for all. Now you know the difference and how to approach each one of these safely. If you found this video helpful, share this with somebody who has been confused about retinol versus retinal or retinoid or retinoids are completely different than retinol or a retinal which absolutely make no sense and let's help more people use this powerful ingredient the right way and that's all for today's video i'll see you all in my next video until then stay tuned stay beautiful